Hello everyone. Hi. A lot of people here. A lot of Twig members. So we are ready to start the the webinar and I hope to you know bring a lot of content for all of you. I'm very happy we reached almost 300 uh, people registered in the in the in the platform we send. So it's a very good number and I'm very happy that not only members of Twig are here but also the members uh, invited other friends and other people from from the freight forwarding uh, industry so very happy to see all of you so today we we decide to start bringing the content about the digital sales especially in times like this you know I, I'm no I know that it's not being easy for all of you being at home and especially for the sales team trying to reach other clients and tr and trying to bring more clients aboard and how can we do that in once we cannot leave the office? I don't know if a um, big part of you, but especially here in Tweek, we are um, all working from our places. So it's it's very important, you know, to understand how can we reach the clients, how can we bring uh, new clients aboard, but without visiting them. So that's that's the goal of the digital sales. And also we saw that a lot of members of us came came to us in, in, in our last conference and also by email, WhatsApp, uh, asking us more content about how can we uh, generate new new sales and how can we make more, you know, more, 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 how can we bring more clients aboard without visiting them? So let's start with the content. Uh, our team is going to be here reading all the questions so if you have the questions you can just leave here and we're gonna answer it to you i'm i'm, I'm gonna uh, answer all of you about the questions and doubts you do have about this content okay so first of all i'd like to introduce myself uh, i'm guilherme luz i'm the ceo of twig logistics network Twig is the biggest network in Latin America. We are also the most technological network in the world. Uh, we already have seven years going to our eighth year as a company. And, and besides that, I'm also a teacher of sales and negotiation in a school called Conquer. And five years ago, six years ago, we we started a new uh, business called Logo, that's a logistics marketing company. So with all that said, you know, Twig, we understand very well the freight for the industry and we are always in touch with our clients. And Conquer, I learned how to, you know, share the content about how can we s sell more and how can we reach more clients and how can we generate better results. And logo, we understand, you know, the challenge that the freight forward the industry face in the daily business, especially with marketing and how to reach the shippers and consignees to bring new car uh, cargos aboard. So today, I hope to bring, you know, all this content for you. Okay? It's all okay there. So. Since the beginning, the, the freight forwarding industry, you know, something that was always very present is the personal visit. And that was good, you know, in the beginning, that's how we generate more sales. We visit our clients and we, you know, pay them lunch and we have, you know, going to bars and also going to their offices, always bring uh, gifts and etc. And the problem is, is, until today, a lot of companies, worldwide freight forwarders companies, they think that the only way to generate new sales is visiting the clients. But the problem is, we now have a huge number of freight forwarder companies in all the big cities, right? And also, the clients, they don't want to receive the much uh, number of visits as they used to. Because in the past it was very easy, you know, to to schedule a meeting with um, a prospect client, you just make a call, ask them for a time, and then they're gonna give you one hour of the day or two hours of the their day, you know, to listen about you and about what you have to offer. 
But the question is, with the time is passing, you know, more people and more time, time, they're trying to save time in, in all the way possible. And with all the competition, imagine if a buyer starts to receiving all the possible clients and all the, the, the freight forwarding companies interesting to make sales. They would stay the whole day trying to make the sale and trying to make this visit. So that's something that's something nice, but the problem is there's a new generation coming and the new generation, the millennials or, you know, the new generation of buyers, they don't want to spend the whole day for new clients, for, for new suppliers. Imagine spend uh, five, six hours of the day receiving a freight forwarding for a visit and it's like one hour and two hours trying you know, to sell the, 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 the service. And in the, in the end of the day, it's boring. And, and it's a lot, a lot, a lot of suppliers. So the question is, the clients are not giving us the two hours. They're not uh, lunching with, the, with, with us every week. They're kind of tired of that. So they are trying to save their time and they are avoiding the, um, the sales visit. So... It's not only about the coronavirus, right? Of course, now we cannot leave our offices or leave our home because it's a time to stay at home and, 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 and try, you know, to avoid all the problems that this virus can cause. But we, I would like to bring your attention more, not for the coronavirus situation that, of course, we are facing, but also trying to understand that the things are changing, and especially the generation of buyers are changing more young people are coming and they tr they want to have a different relationship with the suppliers so with all that said how can we make the digital sales how can we make someone imagine a, a classic salesman how can we try to teach him to reach new clients bring new accounts but not leave in the office stay in the office and trying to do all of this by emails, uh, phone, WhatsApp, and social media, LinkedIn, for example. So I, I know I know a lot of you are gonna say, you know, in my country, we uh, the clients they want to know me, or the clients want to receive a visit. Maybe your country is still like this, but trust me, in one two years, the new generation of buyers will come. And then we need to learn how to reach these new clients in a different way, okay? And that's how we're gonna. That's the the, the topic I wanna bring to you today, and especially how can we uh, use tools and how can we have a discipline to reach new clients, develop new clients, especially uh, reach the the prospect clients that we want to bring aboard without leaving the office, okay? So the first thing we'd like to share with you are two different concepts, okay? The inbound sales and the outbound sales. Everything related with the inbound sales should be under the responsibility of the marketing. And here we are talking about blog, content, social media, um, Google Ads, and videos, YouTube, you know, sharing information on, on on companies, LinkedIn, web, web page, and all that stuff that you share information of your company and you want the clients come to you. So inbound, the clients are interested in what you have to offer and they are touched not by a salesperson, but they are touched by, by marketing campaigns, marketing actions, code emails, and all that stuff that goes to bring new clients, okay? But we also have the outbound sales, and the outbound sales, basically, almost you, of you, you do the sales executive sales visit. So the outbound for a big part of the freight forwarders companies is only the sales executive. He take n name of clients, and then he go and trying to visit the biggest number of clients possible, and trying to, you know, bring some client aboard trying to get the first quotation. So today we're gonna talk about the outbound sales and how can we use technology to reach the biggest number of clients. And not only the biggest number, but how can we have success 
when we reach someone by uh, email or, or phone or message, okay? Okay, but how do we start? How do we start the outbound sales? What I need to do? You know, I'm, I'm just using it to visit clients. How, how can I use technology to do that? So the first tip and the first thing I would like to ask you to do it is do a list of prospects. Okay, how can I do a list of prospects? I just take the name of possible shippers and consignee in my city and my region and that's it. Actually, we ask you to create a list of prospect companies that you want to have as a customer. It's important here to understand that it's not all the kind of companies and all the possible consignees or, or shippers. The marketing and the inbound is responsible to reach the biggest number. But when we say, when we talk about the outbound sales, we need to respect two things. And the first one is the ideal customer profile. What is the ideal customer profile? When I talk with with freight forwarding companies, they all, the big part of them, they say the same. And you know, we, we like all the clients. We can have any clients. We don't care about the size. We don't care about the model, if they are ocean or air or project cargo. But in the end of the day, we need to understand our ideal customer profile. And the ideal customer profile, it's we need to first look to our current mem uh, clients, the uh, current customers we have aboard. When we stop and we look to our uh, um, current clients, we can see the ones that give us more profit. So you have the list of customers that we moved last year, the list of clients you had last year. Take the ones that generate more profit to you. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing would be, what's your company expertise? Maybe, maybe some companies are good ones in, in ocean import, and other ones are good on air export. So it's always important to understand what you are good on in the service and the model. And also, which clients give you more volume, not only about shipment, but cargo volume, the fre frequency of the shipments moving with you. So to define and to draw the ideal customer profile, the Good thing would be look to the current clients you have and try to identify the ones that generate you more profit, the ones that are under your your company's expertise, and also the volume, the ones that generate more volume to you. And once you have the ICP, you can define those clients, the ones that are, for example, and here is an example of ideal customer profile, can be, for example, a family company a medium-sized company, a company that do machinery, that uh, the transport, they usually use ocean to do the transport, and they love your service. So when you look to your current clients and you identify the top clients, the clients that are the, the best clients for you, they have something in common, okay? And maybe what they have in common is that they are a family company or 80% of your top clients are medium-sized companies that do ocean with you. So then you have the ICP. The ICP can be the family company medium size that do ocean and the ones that are motivated by service. So when you understand your ICP, your ideal custom profile, what you need to do is create a list based on the ICP you have. And how can you do this list? You can use the public list you have in your country, or you can hire freight forwarding data companies. There are a lot of data companies out there that sell data or information about volume transport in your country. And the third thing would be search on Google. So if you follow what I'm doing here, it's to do the outbound. First, we need to be prepared and identify which companies we want to reach. Okay, and here we identify our ideal custom profile. And second, we look in a public list in, 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 in data companies and also in Google. And then we created our list. Our list is done. 
that's, I don't know, uh, 100 companies, 80 companies, can be 20 companies only, okay? When we are talking about the outbound, you need, we need before draw a strategy, and, and here we are creating this list. So we imagine that we have a list of 20 companies that respect our ideal customer profile, and there are companies that we want to reach them. They are not our clients yet, okay? They are not using our service, but I want to make some uh, sales actions on them. I want them as a customer. So what I do, the first step, after the list is done, we need to find the decision maker, okay? Because if you follow what I'm, what I'm saying, you cannot visit them. We are not going to visit these clients. So I cannot only take the phone and say, hey, hey can I make a visit for you? No, I need to understand who is the decision maker. I need to reach the right person, okay? When we are talking about the outbound sales, we need to understand first the clients we want to talk with and after who is the person inside the company that I need to talk. Okay, and how can we identify the decision maker? There's a lot of ways to do that. My favorite one, and I'm gonna show you, is the LinkedIn. Okay, use LinkedIn as a tool to find the decision maker, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Or you can make just a simple cold call and call the company and say, "See, I, I have some. Um, we are a transport company. We are freight forwarding company, and we want to send information or material for." for the person responsible to hire a service, the transport service, who is it? And then you can have the name of the person. So that's how you also define who is the decision maker. Or you can also use some system that identify who is the person. So well, I have the decision maker. I have the list of the companies. So now I need to understand how can I reach the decision maker? What are the decision maker contexts? And I'm going to show you how I do it, okay? So here I will find a company, okay? I want to talk with this company. I need some someone in Switzerland. In my example, I'm going to show you a freight forwarding, okay? Just checking if it's okay. It's okay there? Okay. So, okay. so here I want to talk with these guys from Cargo Care, it's a freight forwarding company in Switzerland. And how can I find the right person there, right? So I just go in the LinkedIn and then I look for this company. It looks a great company, but I want to know who I need to talk, talk with. So I go here in employees. Okay, it's, it's in Portuguese, my LinkedIn, but you, you can find the right person. And okay, that's here, Marco Burri. He's the CEO of Cargo Care. So probably he's the decision maker. He's the one that I need to talk with. So what I do here is I create a Marco Buhi, right? He's the person I want to talk with. How can I find his contacts? Well, I want to show you two tools that I use. See, the first one already come here. That is Lucia, okay? Lucia is this website that help me to find B2B contact information. So it's, uh, it's free in the beginning and then you can find information about the person as email, uh, phone number, website, more information about the company. So as I already have Lucia in my computer, when I go in Marco Burri uh, profile, see it already comes here to me, the Marco Burri email and also his phone. So I already have his contact because I, I, I use Lucia as a solution. But I can also use, for example, Hunter.io, okay? Hunter.io, it's a platform to find emails from people. So what I need to put here, it's only the website of Cargo Care. 
So imagine if I go here and then I want to know the website of Cargo Care. I just click here in Cargo Care. And then I go about. And I have the website. I just copy and paste the website. And then I click here. And then I can find the name, emails of all, a lot of people in Cargo Care. Right? And I can find Marco Burri uh, email. But imagine if I don't find Marco Burri's email here. What I can do? I can understand that Mar the cargo care.ch it's always the same standard name dot last name. So if Marco Burri was not here, but I found the email of Sandra Bloom, I can put Marco dot Burri or I can have the, the email of any person in cargo care. For example, let me see. Patrick said, okay? Patrick said he's not here. His email is, is, is not in the in the Hunter IO. But I can imagine that if his name is like this, Patrick, it's gonna be patrick.stat at cargo care dot ch. Right, so the first, so I already found the information. I found the email of my decision maker. I found the, the phone number. And I can use the Lucia, as I informed you before, or I can use Hunter IO. That's also find that lead. All those tools are free, okay? You can use to find the right information of the right person. And the the following point, and I would like to make sure uh, that you are following everything, we did the target companies, the ICP companies that we, we want to talk with. And we do we did this list. It can be like 20 companies, 30 companies, as I said. You can put the, the, the number of companies you want, but it's also always good to respect the ICP, the, 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 custom, the clients that have more fit while, with what you have to offer, okay? Then find the decision maker name and the decision maker contact using tools, using the LinkedIn in this case. And here we're going to try to understand the prospect. Okay. Let's go. Okay. How can I understand the prospect? So now it's time to be a stalker. The stalker is not a bad thing when we talk about digital sales, okay? The stalker, stalker is a good thing. We need to understand. Because imagine when we do have time to go visit our clients, it's easy. We have a coffee with them and then we have one hour to identify who is the person. If it's a person moved by numbers or if someone that care about the service, which words you should use with them, which words you should avoid. It's a person more directly or if someone that really, really wants to talk. But when you have this sales visit, it's easy. But the question is, we don't have time to make a visit, a sales visit here. How can we use technology to understand someone else? How can we use technology to understand our prospect client? And I'm gonna show you another tool that I use, okay? And the name of the tool is Crystal Knows, crystalknows.com. And this website, it's, it's, they can, you know, they can understand someone's personality based by data. So we use data here to understand who is the person we want to talk with. So let's see our handsome friend, Marco Burri from Switzerland. Okay, I know Marco, I have his email and phone number because Lucia gave me, but I want to understand Marco as a person. So I, I already have the crystal nose uh, in, 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 my, in my Google Chrome, okay? So it appears here to me, view personality, and I'm gonna click here. I want to understand Marco as a person, okay? And see how nice is this tool. 
He gonna tell me that Marco tends to remove emotions from decision making as much possible, value efficiency and logic over intuition of social proof. He's a type of questionnaire. He, he likes to, to, to make questions about everything. And here we have comparisons. He more, you know, he likes to make questions. He's not someone that is moved by emotions. He's moved by data, by numbers, by logic. Okay? So Marco tends to prefer taking charge of a situation and work independently. You know, he likes to make the decisions by he, his own. And, and, and once, you, once you reach him as a CEO of Cargo Care, He's someone that wants to make the decisions about everything. And it comes naturally to Marco uh, questioning efficiency practice, you know, high value accuracy. So he's, you, you, you see the motivations, motivations about Marco, how is Marco in the work, and, and how is Marco at communication. So you understand someone. Imagine that I didn't know Marco. And here with this crystal nose, I can understand how he is as a person and see how nice is this. I want to send an email to Marco and I want to say, make a sales pitch and I can get advice. So the tool show me that I should write, here what to expect for cost, here's the bottom line, here's the potential downsides. So this is the, the things I should write in the email. So I, I, I need to reach Marco. I need to, uh, uh, you know, call his attention in outbound sales because I'm not visiting them. I'm just sending an email. How can I do that? Understand how he's uh, as a person and trying to use all the information I get about here in the crystal notes. So that's how I use to understand the other. We need to understand the prospect client. We already got their list, their emails, their contact, and now I know he's as a person. So I have more tools and more information to have more success in the outbound sales. Okay? Because you only get one chance to make a first impression, but we are not visiting the client here. How can, I, how can we do that by email? We need to build a winning email to our prospect. Do not think about the email marketing campaigns, okay? This is uh, something uh, related to the marketing uh, area. We are talking here about the sales guys. How the sales guys will bring a new client using emails. We need to build a winning email to our prospect. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. You have any questions? About tools, okay. So the yes, thing hmm? I didn't know Lucia and Hunter. Yes, that's very good. Lucia and Hunter is 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 very good tools to find new contacts. Guys, now we're gonna talk about the winning email. Okay, in the outbound sales, what I like to do and what we do in Twig is we don't send thousands of emails with the same content. Okay. That's something that must be done by the marketing. Here, we are trying to reach the clients that makes some sense for us, clients that we want to bring aboard. So we send few emails and each mail is different because I need to build a win email. So we need to respect some, some, some points to build this nice email, okay? So the first thing is a write a killer subject line. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you receive hundred of emails a day and if someone send you presentation or send you uh, we are a freight forwarding company uh, partnership proposal you're not gonna open these emails we lot we receive a lot of e-spend emails and imagine clients receiving a lot of the same emails every day okay Twig network learn about us you know you need to find and build a right killer subject line. It's all about the subject. It, it all depends how you're gonna um, have the, 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 can you open the, if you have a different uh, subject line, for example, subject line with few words, and especially here, what I like to use is use the name of the person in the subject. For example, if you use my name, 
Guilherme, we miss you. Guilherme, we have a proposal for you. Uh, thank you, Guilherme. When you use some kind of, you know, person name or some kind of some custom field in the killer in the subject, then you have 20, 30% more chance to have your email open. So always, when you send an email for outbound sales, think about the subject. That's the first thing. What we do in the company, we, we always have the tests, okay? So this week, for example, we send 10 or 20 emails with some subject. If we see that not a lot of people answered for the next week, we change the subject and we see if we have more people opening the emails or more people answering the emails. So we like to do the test and that's something that I would like to recommend you. Always trying to change subject and content because you can see what is working better. When I, see, when I send big emails from, from my members and clients, they don't open the email or they open and say, you know what, I'm going to read that after. But when we, when we change the content and we send you know, smaller emails, we have way better opening rate and also we have a better answering rate. So the first, first thing would be write a killer subject line. Second thing, personalize your message. So, okay, we define in the ICP, the ICP is someone that is uh, someone that work with ocean import and as Marco I saw that Marco is not a guy moved by emotions he likes to go straight in the point he likes numbers informations everything so if I understand that Marco is like that it's important to understand what motivates the prospect if it's a data person the prospect cares about the quality of service or cares about the background of the company when you understand that, for example, I now understand Marco, so if I'm going to send Marco a message, what I'm going to do? I'm going to send a message directly to the point with data, with information, with logical information. If I spend an email to Marco informing, you know, we are passionate by what we do, we love our business, we know this is a family thing, Marco he really don't care about that. It's not that he's a bad person. Marco is a very nice person, by the way. But the question is, when he receives an email, he like small emails, direct to, direct to the point, you know, just send me the right information I want. So if I understand that, how can I build a big email to Marco? I can't. So I write a killer subject line and also I have a message according to the personality I found in the crystal nose, okay? And the third point is the content of the email. You need to call the attention for the import subjects to the ICP. So if the ICP is someone that bring ocean import cargo from China, how can we lose time and lose space in the email talking about that we are good in projects? He don't care about the projects this time. He don't care that our company have 35 years. He's care, he care about the ocean transport about on, on China. So we need to, you know, the first impression, we're going to say the good things we have ocean transport, maybe the rates, maybe service, the quality we have, talking about the transit time, talking about the, the volume we move uh, from China to South America. I, I, don't, I don't know. We have... We had more than 30, 300 people uh, registered for more than 40 countries. So we are talking with people from, from different countries here. You need to understand what moves your client. And when you have the ideal custom profile, you're going to identify that. So that's very important. So a small email going directly to the point. And also, please do not send presentations on PDF or PowerPoint, okay? I'm going to show you how we do here and, and tweak, okay? We have this tool that is called SharpSpring, okay? It's, it's a complete sales marketing platform, and they have everything for us.
So here, for example, what we do is just one second. Okay. Here's in Sharp Spring, we have all the information we need. Okay. All our presentations, all our materials, videos, and everything we put here in, in, in Sharp Spring. And we created, for example, commercial presentations, okay? And then we have the presentation commercial overview. I just click here and then I have the link. I can use this link here and see I'm gonna have the presentation of our company, our overview here. So please do never, never in an outbound action put attached attach it your presentation. That's why, because you're it, it probably gonna go to the span because it's gonna be a heavy file. So always have a link. You can use Sharp Spring or you can have uh, use different tools to you know put in your presentations and videos always in 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 a link in the internet. So for example, here's our overview in Spanish. Okay, we're talking about our group when we are based, that we are the biggest network in Latin America and etc. So every time that a lead or someone interesting in our business, they receive an email from us, what we do is we never, never send a presentation in the email. So that's a, a very important rule to build a winning email, okay? And also it's very important uh, take care about the email size and I'm gonna show you a tool that I like to use called MailShake. When you go in a MailShake, MailShake is for different different uh, uh, actions and, and information but for example you go in MailShake.com and you can go on resource and go in an email cop analyzer and you can put here an email. Let me see if I have an email Okay, I got an email from this guy, called me for, for something. Okay, he have um, probably a platform. And then I can copy this and go in a mail shape and put here. And what are you gonna say to me? That email is good so far. He gonna ch see if the, the, the phrases are too long, if I use too many links or too many images, emojis, and etc. So if the email say it's not that good, he gonna give you tips if your email is good or not. So always when you write an email, you can just copy and paste here in the email cop analyzer, and he gonna inform you if the email is okay or not. So it's a good way to understand if your email is a good size, because it's important to remember, here we are talking about how can be more assertive, how can we make our uh, outbound prospect clients open the email and giving us a chance. Imagine that we are making a visit. Here it's the same thing but without a visit. So we need to receive a good feedback from the prospect clients we want, okay? And the last thing, always, always use a call to action in a, in a meeting. How, what is a call to action? You need to finish your outbound emails with information like, can we have a call next Wednesday? What's the best, to, best time to call you? Uh, it's, it's not right uh, on the proper way here, but it's what best time to call you tomorrow afternoon? I will set a meeting between us next Monday at 3 p.m. Is that okay? What I want to share with you here is that it's very important always to put a call to action at the end of the email. You know, can I call you tomorrow, 2 p.m.? Can I call you next Wednesday? Otherwise, your email is going to be open in the end. going to say, okay, best regards. If you have any doubt, just let me know. You're never going to uh, receive a feedback from this kind of emails. So please use call to actions in in the end of the emails, okay? And I like to use more than call to actions. I like to use links for meetings, online meetings, okay? And I like the three uh, tools here. We have Zoom. A lot of people are using Zoom now because of the, the coronavirus and the social distancing uh, policy. We also have GoToMeeting. It's a very nice platform. And the Meeting Board. I like 
Personally, I like a lot of meeting board. Let me show you how is the meeting board. The meeting board is nice because you avoid one uh, email exchange. We are trying to save time here in number of emails exchange, right? So when you send a link for your client, customer, partner, uh, it doesn't matter, with the meeting board, the person can see your schedule that is linked with the Gmail, Gmail schedule, also with the Outlook. So you can send for the person which time you do have available. So imagine I'm inviting some customer. Can we talk next week? See the link of meeting board that I have. You can just click there and, and, and save a spot. So your customer, he go in the meeting board link, find the times he, you have available. He just click it and that's it. So you avoid uh, emails exchange like, can be tomorrow 11.30 and then someone answer. Can be 12.30 and the other said, no. Can be 4 p.m., okay, 4 p.m. is okay but it's already four or three emails. We need to avoid emails, okay? So meeting board is very nice because it's already go and send you like a one-one meeting, okay, schedule, and it's a very nice tool to use for the meetings. How long time do you have, Glyph? 41 minutes already, okay. Guys, and now it's the digital meeting. It's, it's, it's time to do the meeting on a digital way. See, we find the name of the companies, we found the decision makers, we found the name and the, the, found the name of the decision maker, we found the contacts, the decision making contacts, email, phone, and everything. After that, we understood our, um, our, our decision maker. How is he uh, as a person, right? So now I have one shot to send one right email, a nice email to this person talking with a nice subject, talking about topics that are interesting to him, talking small things, going directly to the point or going in the way the client understands is the best way from him. And then you put your opening rate, email opening rate, you increase 20, 30, 40%. So now you have more chance for your customer, prospect customer, someone that do not know you, starting to know your company and open your email and say, this guy is nice. You know, I like what he, he, he said. He talked about my business and what I do. See, I call to action. Or I can talk with him next Monday and that's it. So you, you got one shot to talk with the prospect client. And it's way better to do that in my opinion, than a digital meeting, uh, than a real meeting. And I'm gonna give you some points, okay? It's cheaper than a sales visit. That's, that's, that's something very crucial and straightforwarding business in the next years, okay? We all know that the mar margins are going down. Freight forwarders are with a lot of employees, a lot of people in the office. What we need to do here is decrease the cost. Okay, with all the coronavirus uh, uh, situation, all the companies start to look into their uh, real costs. And how can we avoid costs? We should avoid the sales costs, especially visiting clients that do not have the fit with us, that are not our ideal customer profile. Clients that are used to uh, work with the big players or they are very good on air, but I'm very good on ocean. So it's better to concentrate our sales effort in the clients that can generate more benefit and results for us, okay? So even after this situation that we are at home, I suggest all of you to starting put some part of your visits on a digital way, okay? If you're doing uh, 100 sales visits a month, trying to do 80 sales visits and take the 20 other, the 20%, starting Try, trying to start with the digital sales, okay? Will be more cheaper than the sales visit. And more than that, our your sales guy can do more meetings in the same day. You know, it's all by internet, by emails, and, and, and by and by webinars, by webcams. So you, you avoid the time, you know, with the logistics going from one client to another. You avoid gas and all that stuff. So it's cheaper and you can do more meetings. You also can, you know, reach uh, long distance customers because probably you, you're going to have a lot of sales offices, 
But in the end, maybe you don't need a lot of sales offices. What you need is a very nice and concentrated sales department that can reach any region, any state of your country. When you have the digital meeting, you know, you can do that. You also have more material available. For example, you can use videos, presentations. You can, you know, if you're talking with a client and he said, ah, I do have a project. You have a project, Let me, just one second. And then you put a presentation of a project or you just share with him the video. You have all the information available because you are in your computer, in your office. So you have more material to convince your client. You also save time and uh, save money with printing material. Let's talk in something serious, okay, guys? Who wants to receive more brochures, flyers? You don't want that, okay? You're never gonna read it, you're never gonna see it, you just get it and put it in the trash. So we need thinking about the future, ecology, and, 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 and how, you know, the, the, the environment. So I suggest you stop printing material. No one's gonna see it. Even the sales visit, trying to do this all digital. Okay, and the last point that is very nice in the digital meeting is that you can involve other people in the meeting. So if you're talking about uh, you know something specific about financial, how it work in the financial department, you can just say to your to your prospect prospect client, "Can you give me a minute? Can I add in this conversation my financial director?" And with one click, the financial director is in the meeting. And maybe the guy said, I, I want to talk with your managing director because I, I, I want to know who is it. And then with one click, you add someone else. So I just see benefits in digital meeting. To eat, we cannot visit our clients because we are a worldwide company. We need to find clients in different countries every day. So we need to use the digital meeting as our, our sales visit. And it's working. So I suggest... Okay, you cannot start doing 100% of the, uh, the meetings as digital, but trying to focus, especially in the clients, they're not big volume, okay? Because if you spend a lot of time and money with the clients that are not giving you a lot of, you know, they don't have that big potential, it's not worth. The cost of acquisition is going to be higher than the profit that this client will generate for you in the next years. So trying to focus on the digital meeting, okay? And also, and especially because the people are coming. Who is coming? The millennials are coming, okay? The young people, the young buyers are coming. They don't want to get a, a bottle of whiskey, okay? They don't want to have a lunch with you every uh, Friday. They just want to sit in, your, in their tables and desks, work, use digital things, platforms and apps and everything, save time and going home to stay with their friends. They don't want that, you know, drinking environment to be convinced. They want to be convinced about service, quality, technology, and you need to think this in the coming years, okay? Wow, a lot of things, right? We got the list, we understand the decision maker, we found the contact, we write a perfect email, we got the, sh the chance to do a digital meeting. We know how to do digital. We send presentation. We were perfect in the, in the online meeting. But now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to follow up. The follow up is very, very important. And how can we do that? Well, all the sales, it needs to respect a cadence, OK? It's very important to understand the steps. If you send an email, if you send information today, you need to wait some days, one day, two days. You cannot just be in there pushing your client. Hey, do you have any news? Do you have any news? It's, it's, it's not like this. It's, it's, it's not how it works. So it's very important to respect that. This was just an example, okay? So I'm going to give you an example how we like to do uh, this sales cadence. And I suggest you to do the same, not the same, but trying to, to do some, some kind of uh, sales cadence and do starting with an example and trying to change along the time. Okay. So imagine you just had the meeting, a digital meeting with someone. Do not send a big email after that with, we are this for the we are class B, we are yada, we are, no, no, don't do that, okay? It's a big email, they're not gonna read. What are you gonna send? Just a thank you email. Hey, thank you for your time, it was a very nice meeting. That's it. 
No sales actions, not material, not trying to sell them, not pushing them for codes. You're just going to uh, show them that you care, okay? And then you're going to give you give him like two, three days, four days. It depends how you think is the best way. We like to give some days after this, this, this thank you email. We like to send some company information. For example, uh, our company just attended the Twig meeting. See the video. Actually, today we launched the meeting, uh, uh, the video of our last annual meeting. was very nice. It was in Sao Paulo uh, last month. Uh, before all these crazy things happening in the world, but you can use this information for a client. You know, you're not trying to sell, you're not sending your presentation, you're not pushing for, for inquiries, you just send him an email and said, see what we did. It's a nice information. People like, uh, like to see videos, okay? They like to see videos from, 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 from the market. And you don't need to produce video. If you produce videos, it's better, okay? Video is a very nice way to promote your company. But for example, in this, in this case, our members, they could use our video, Twigs meeting video, to promote. But you can say, oh, see this logistics video that I uh, found in the internet. See this information. But it's nice to send information about your company, okay? And then after that, like three days, four days, you send another email. Like, did you know that we recently moved an interesting project, please check the details. Again, I'm talking here about things that we did. You send the information, you showing them your know-how, but you're not telling them we are good on that. You're just sharing what you really did. So imagine the first email was just a thank you email. The second one was oh, something they did, they attended a conference. The third one was a nice project. Oh, that's company, it's nice. but. Your customer, the prospect customer, is not answering you here, okay? He just got an information, information. And after that, you send company differentials. For example, we just got the AEO, uh, AEO license. See the details of it. Another thing we did, it, you know, now you are sending them that you are different for the competitors. First, you, you show what you did as a company. Second, the cargo you moved. And the third, different things you did as a company. See, that's very nice to split all this information in four emails. Otherwise, it's going to be a big email. People, you're not going to read your big emails, okay? And you are sharing, and you are putting a lot of things together. It's very, very, you know, uh, Pollution, uh, pollu uh, if I may, a very pollution, and, and you cannot read it because a lot of information, and, and not gonna pay attention. So share this in small emails. Always, always changing the subjects. Okay, remember about the killer subject. Changing the subjects, trying to do some personalized things, small emails, and use the videos and material always linked. Never send a PDF. Okay, and then the fifth email. Then yes. Do you need any support in any traffic? Is there something that I can help you? Here in the fifth email, maybe 15 days before, you are now asking them if they need support. This is, guys, sales is like a relationship, okay? You cannot just invite someone in the first, hey, let's go together uh, trying to, to, let's drink a beer together. How you, you create a relationship? For example, if you're Instagram, you follow someone and then you like some pictures, you send some comments, you send a direct in message, and the LinkedIn is the same. You know, you follow the person, you like some posts, you start to create a relationship with this outbound client, okay? It's difficult, and you all know, if you just receive an email, you say, hey, we are this company, see our presentation, do you have any inquiry? It's too direct. You know, the prospect client is not going to answer, he's not going to like this email, going to be a big email, probably going to go to his spam box. So, small emails is a relationship. Build the relationship. And if you got any uh, feedbacks on this email, you go again after one month or 20 days, and then we ask it again. Can we book a meeting? And again, with a call to action. Remember, can we have a call next Wednesday? Set dates, okay? What's the best to call you tomorrow afternoon? Dates, times. Otherwise, you're going to be there forever, okay? And always use the, um, 
the tools to set the meetings, okay? Meeting board is a good one. And also, I would like to show you how you build this cadence because you can do all this cadence of emails on a digital way. You don't need to send emails every day or you don't need to remember about that. You can use tools that are going to send all these follow-up emails on automatic way. You just set once and the system do everything for you uh, respecting the dates. So let me show you all the tools that do that. Ma uh, Mailshake, Yesware, Mixmax, Woodpecker, and also Sales Hand. Let me show you the how it works. Sales Hand, for example. And see what they do? You can automate it, your follow-ups by individual emails. You can automate it follow-ups for mail merge campaign. And how you do that? You set nine stage, you personalize, personalize your message, send from any mail so it goes as your email. You don't need to use MailChimp or all these uh, platforms that send emails. They're going to send email directly to your email account. So that's very nice and, 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 and it's very good to, to use that. So with all this, this information, see that they have a lot, a lot of they have the link tracking as I as I show you the sales hand. You can put all your presentations here, so you don't need to worry about anymore about the follow up because once you build the follow up, oh, sorry. Once you build the follow up schedule and, and and dates, the system gonna do everything for you. So you just set all this step of emails, just put in these tools and forget about the client. He's going to receive the emails on automatic way. And it looks like, like your email. It goes with your name, uh, through your email, and it looks and, it, and it use the name of the person, the company of the person. So it's very personal email. Okay? And guys, please, that's something that I really want to ask you for this. Please use CRMs. Okay? Salesforce is a very big one, very nice one, very complete, but it's kind of expensive. But you can use the pipe drive. Pipe drive is very cheap and it's a very good way to understand when you need to contact your client. If your client is, uh, is, is you can start all the steps of the client inside your, your platform. So basic, you need to be more, you have assertiveness is a key success for sales. It's not more sales per people, okay? You don't need more salespeople. You just need more productivity. You need to be rich. Um, you need to reach the clients on the right way. You need to do outbound sales. Use digital tools. All the, the tools I show you, big part of them actually are for free. So I can send you after the list of the, the tools we use. So this is basically how you get name of clients you want understand them, send emails, do digital meeting sales until you receive the first quotation. Because this is the success of a freight forward, right? Receive the first quote. So how can we do this on a digital way? Doing as I show you. That's something and how we do. And I would like to thank you for your attention and for your time. We had a lot of people watching with us. I'm very happy and proud of not only of, of our members but the largest industry that is here with us and we are at, at, at your disposal to to help you with any questions and etc let me see if there's any questions here guys if you have any questions you can just write here okay so we have here um, uh, my friend Fabio Camada, he's from Curitiba, he's informing about the LinkedIn uh, Sales Navigator. It's a very nice tool, it's, it's, it's kind of expensive, but it, it's very nice. Uh, I also use it. Uh, Isra Jubran uh, from Palestine, how to make customers interested in the online meeting. Okay. We have Isra from from Pakistan, and he was asking how can we be interesting in how can we make our customers interesting in online meetings. I know that it's, it's difficult to change the culture of some countries and some some areas, but when you show to your clients that 
he can save time with the digital the, with the digital uh, meeting. You know, he's gonna see the benefits, and something's changing now because all of us we are facing this coronavirus situation, so we are getting used to the digital meetings because we need you, right? We need you. So once we are used with all this technolo technology, I'm pretty sure that from now on. Also, the clients, the forwardings, and all the logistics community, you're gonna get more used to the digital meetings. Okay? Um, More questions? Peter asking me if I still lo love him. Yes, Peter, I still love you. How do you suggest to keep sending mails to the customers? Do you suggest to keep sending mails to the customers? It's very different. Okay, if we suggest send emails to the customers, there are two different emails, okay? When we talk about the marketing emails, yes, please keep sending emails to your clients. Not a big quantity, okay, because you're gonna be boring, but send like monthly emails or um, and, and in, two, in two weeks, send an email to your clients. But do not try to send these emails as a sales campaign. I'm talking about uh, marketing, okay? These emails should be more with information of your company videos and, and etc. Just to keep your client near to you, okay? About the emails that I'm telling you now in this presentation with the outbound, yes, this you should send, but not a big quantity of emails, and you need to personalize each email for each client. So the two different things. Marketing emails, yes, but not trying to sell, send information. And the outbound uh, emails trying to book a meeting, trying to sell the service, but with a personalized email and few emails per month, okay? Otherwise, people are not going to like you. Last question. Because of the time. Okay. It's Kamal Ansari. Mm -hmm. How can we analyze our customer? Okay, uh, Kamal, he asked me how can we analyze your customer. Uh, I like to use all the tools possible, okay? LinkedIn show me the connections I have with this person, where they studied and what they worked before. I like to create, you know, these connections. So LinkedIn is the best option for me. You understand very well your, your, your prospect. And please, study your prospect before reach them. You need to understand them before, okay? You need to understand them as a person. Otherwise, you're going to be just a cold email and then you're not going to have too much success on that. Guys, that was everything. Uh, some uh, Gabriel asked me if the video is going to be uh, available. Yes, we're going to leave the, the video available live in our YouTube channel. You can share. Yeah, we're going to send by email. You can share with your team. You can share with our, your contacts. I hope all of you stay safe and, and doing all this, you know, mess that is happening in the world is... It's something that is happening, but I hope with all of this, we learn how to be digital and how to sell on a digital way. And that's the best way that we can change our market, avoiding costs and bringing new clients by our using our computer and avoid all the cost of acquisition and etc. Thank you to the members. Thank you, all the logistics community. It was very, very nice. And I hope to see you soon in the next live. And take care. Bye-bye, guys.